Hello friends and greetings for the day. Welcome back to another tutorial on ISTKB foundation level sample paper discussions where we are talking about the tips, tricks and time management related concepts of getting certified with this particular level. As a part of this particular tutorial, we are jumping on to the chapter 6. Finally, we are done with all of the chapters and this is the last chapter of this particular sample paper set A. And uh, the chapter 6 will have just two questions and we are discussing the remaining two of them. So let's get started quickly. The next question we have for you is question number 39. Which test activities does a data preparation tool support? Now, many of us think that did we discuss about this in the syllabus anywhere because data preparation tool is not something which has been described. But this is something which is in correlation to that of the first chapter. If you remember the test process, we discussed about the activities which gets conducted in different phases. And this is just being brought back from there. So that's the reason most of the time I always say in all my sessions or whenever I'm interacting with the audience, I say that that it is important to go through all the six chapters. Nothing is optional. Nothing is something which you can skip. It is very, very important and crucial that you look forward to go through all the chapters. Now, data preparation tool is a tool which will be used for data preparation in simple words. And data preparation is an activity which gets conducted somewhere in our test process. So we just have to recall the test process and identify that in which phase we conduct data preparation. So if you recall in analysis, we do test condition identification and uh, in test design phase, we write the test cases and identify the data, okay? Identify the data requirements, but test implementation is the phase where we write the data. That is we prepare the data, create the data, or finally validate that this is the right set of data to be used. So test implementation is the phase where this activity takes place. And in that context, let's look at the options here, which would give us a very clear picture of what is the right answer. So option A says test design, option B says test analysis, C says test implementation, and D says test completion. C, the options are a little tricky at this point of time because they know exactly where we will go wrong because many of us do not remember that what happens in test design and what happens in test analysis with respect to multiple things like data, environment, and uh, other things like traceability. If you remember in uh, test design, we identify the data. In implementation, we prepare the data. Same way in test design phase, we identify or design the test environment, whereas in test implementation, we build the environment. So that key difference between one word, okay, this can be verified back into the chapter one tutorials or syllabus as well, that the words have a vital role between these two phases. And that is where most of the people will say test design, where we design the data and go wrong. Okay, please be careful. Every single word in the syllabus and tutorials will highlight this, that what is the difference between the activities. So put together, the right answer for this particular question is C, that is test implementation is the phase where a data preparation tool will be used. So that's how we can make it very simple just by having the knowledge of chapter one in much more detailed way. So let's look at the next question here. The next question we have is uh, Question number 40, which is the last and final question here. And uh, this question is basically talking about which item correctly identifies a potential risk of performing test automation. I think risk for the test automation has been clearly being described uh, as we have discussed in our syllabus. And uh, we have been looking into the different risks which are related to the vendor, related to uh, making use of the tool, not being ready for it, uh, sometimes the tools not having the competency to do the job, over-reliance, and many other factors like that. So again, here the options will help you drive the right answer because we have to correlate and what could turn into a benefit, what could turn into a risk of using a test automation or a test tool. So let's start with reading the option. The option A says, it may introduce unknown regression in the production. C, change in the code of an application or system introduces regression or change in the environment introduces regression. But an automation testing tool is useful for doing regression testing, right? But does not introduce any kind of regression in the system, whether in production or inside before the release, right? So sometimes the words will try to uh, correlate that if you know regression testing is done by automation testing, you would not read the option carefully and then pick the right answer as that. So we want you to break the words in a way that you can really conclude that what is the right answer here, 
right? So this is an automation tool, and automations do not tool do not introduce regressions, that is side effects in a particular system. Let's go with B. B says sufficient efforts to maintain test where may not be properly allocated. Sufficient efforts to maintain the test assets, right? So like test assets, again, there, there could be anything which we talk about uh, with respect to automation tool. I need to have people who, to, who can take care of it. Don't forget that at, when, when it comes to a new introduction to tool in an organization, people should be well aware that what kind of artifacts it needs, what kind of assets will it be generating, what kind of reports it will be populating, and someone should be aware to maintain them. Someone should be able to manage them throughout the life cycle. So if this doesn't happen, then certainly it will become a risk of using the tool because people don't know how to use that or how to maintain what additional efforts are required to work on a tool. So, so far, this looks a little good. Let's go with the other option. Option C says, uh, testing tools and associated testware may not be sufficiently relied upon. Testing tools and uh, related uh, artifacts, whatever it is, is not sufficiently re relied upon, is a weakness of a particular tool to be adopted. And it's not a risk. Is that if it is not, you know, if we are not able to rely upon the tool minimum, then certainly I'll not go for the tool. So it's not a risk. Risk is something which happens when you are using the tool. So this particular point was mentioned other way around in our documentation or syllabus, that is over-reliance is a risk. That means too much reliability on a tool. That means becoming used to it and thinking automation tool will do everything is a risk. Now this is with respect to use of it, but not sufficient reliability is there, then I would not go for that tool. And that's not a risk. That's not, this is more of like uh, a, cred a credibility which is a prerequisite which we check for in a particular tool to adopt. So this does not turn into a risk. This is more of like incompatibility of a tool or incapability of a tool to get become an automation testing tool. So this is the level you need to really judge an option with in order to come to the conclusion. Otherwise, it's very easy to say that C looks the right answer. Okay, but this is not. And option D says uh, it may reduce the time allocated for manual testing. Of course, why not? Automation testing are done for that but the point is we are talking about the risk related to automation testing not the benefits so that's where we can rule out the option d very easily and then putting it up all together so right answer for this particular question is b sufficient efforts to maintain testware may not be properly allocated after procuring the tool then certainly it would result into a risk so i think that makes it very simple that how exactly we should judge the options and throughout this playlist you have understood many tips and tricks, but that's not the end. We would be starting with the set B in our next tutorial and picking another set of 40 questions to discuss more and more detail about the examinations. Throughout, we have four different uh, sets, so you will have a lot of tips and tricks throughout this session. And one way, you will be recapping and revising the entire syllabus again. So that's all from this particular tutorial team. Should you have anything else, feel free to comment below. I'm always there to address your queries and answer them well. Till then, keep learning, keep exploring, keep understanding the context. Thanks for watching the video team and happy learning.